What is up guys, Sarnoff Canadian Rider. Today I'm gonna to be answering your most common questions that you've had on my 2008 Audi R8. It's been three years since I have purchased this car. I just came back from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and had a great track session with it. And over the course of all of the videos I've done on this car from maintenance to modification to detailing and cleaning, I've been asked so many questions. I'm gonna be answering the most asked questions that you guys have had on my channel in case you, know, you may be looking to buy this car or you're considering it. So I wanna go ahead and answer those questions for you. So let's start off the first question. And this is from Jonathan. And he's talking about his dream car. And his question is, Sondran, I'm really looking for getting my dream car. I've been following your journey on your Audi R8 and I wanna go ahead and get it. But I'm hesitant in case there's a major expense that comes. What happens if the engine or transmission breaks? What is the cost of those repairs? So Jonathan, that's a great question. That's something I actually was also concerned about when I went ahead and purchased this car. The reality is, and the great fact is, is that this engine is a tried and true engine from the Audi RS4. It's a mass produced engine, it's a common V8, and there's no systematic issues with that engine. Transmission is the same thing. There's been no issues on the transmission. Now, if you go onto the Audi R8 talk forums, you may see you know, anecdotal things about the engine or transmission, but for the most part, most people don't have any problems with this. I would just say, continue doing religious maintenance on the car, oil changes, oil filter changes, etc., and you should be fine. Otherwise, you should also just be aware about the two Achilles heels on this car, the magnetic ride suspension, which I've talked about, and the air conditioning compressor. So you want to make sure you get those checked. I've mentioned those in my previous videos as well. I'll link it in the card above. But if you're looking to get it as your dream car, I highly recommend it. You're going to have a blast with this car. I say go ahead and do it. Life is short. If you can do it, more the merrier. So I hope that answered your question, Jonathan. The next question on this car is, Canadian rider, you have the V8, but do you regret not getting the V10? So this is a question I also get a lot about. The question between the V8 or the V10. The reality is the V10 was just simply out of my budget and I couldn't find a spec of the V10 that even was close to my budget that had everything that I was looking for in this car. I wanted to make sure I get the six speed manual transmission with that gated manual shifter. That was definitely a must for me. And I wanted something in black and I wanted the first generation R8 with these beautiful LED headlights here. So I wanted to make sure I got those pieces. So I went, I found a great deal on this V8 and there just weren't that many cars to pick from. I just pretty much recently checked for Audi R8s in the Canadian market and there was like three or four for sale only. So it's a very small market. The owners of these cars are keeping their cars. That's what's keeping the resale value up and growing on these cars. So that's why I went with the V8. And there's been no regrets. This V8 is a screamer. Revs up to 8,200 RPM, sounds amazing, is reliable, and honestly brings me so much joy when made it to that six-speed manual transmission. So I don't regret it at all. But if you had the money and the funds, yes, go get the V10, especially if you get it mated with the six-speed manual transmission. All right. Next question, Canadian rider slash Sonder. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name. My name is Sondran actually, and I also have a separate YouTube channel on marketing down on Canadian rider below if you're interested in that. His question is, is around oil burn. So it looks like he just picked it up. Do you get significant oil burn on this 4.2 liter V8? And yes, I do get oil burn, but it's not significant. I just came back from Mossport a full track day. And yes, I burned maybe about half a liter of oil. So you're gonna to need to top up oil on this car once in a while. It's nothing that's super serious. Even in my Lexus IS350 and in my Lexus IS250, I get engine oil burn. That's common with older cars. Now I know this has only 53,000 kilometers, but it's not anything that would concern me at all. So if you are burning oil, that's completely fine. Make sure you top it up with the right weight oil for your car and you should be good to go. So the next question comes from David and that's about insurance. Canadian rider, how much is insurance for a car like this? Because already I can imagine insurance premiums would be really high. Well, the great news story is insurance actually isn't so bad on this car. I'm paying about $150 a month for insurance on this car. I'm 31 years old. I have a clean record. So that gives you a little bit of perspective, but know that insurance is gonna be completely different no matter where you are. I'm in Canada, in Ontario. It could be different if you're in British Columbia, the United States, or out there internationally. But I will say, 
It wasn't too much of a shocker for insurance. And that was a good plus, because when you think about a supercar, you think about extravagant insurance, but that wasn't the case. The next question was around major maintenance items. So this is kind of maybe a little bit different of an angle to the previous question. The only major maintenance items that you have to deal with outside of your consumables, which is like oil changes, brakes, pads, rotors, tires, is the magnetic ride suspension, which all of them fail. So you're gonna to need to have a replacement plan for that and their air conditioning compressor. Now, since I bought the car, it's been three years, the AC compressor was actually replaced before my ownership of the car and it's still running great today. But those are two things that you have to be aware of on this car. And I will mention one other kind of fluky thing that you should be aware of if you're looking to buy this car. I have a video on this as well. I'm gonna be linking it in the card above. The front frame on these cars have been known to crack. Now, just because you see it on the forums doesn't mean it happens to every single one of these cars. But if you're purchasing a car like this, making an investment like this, it doesn't hurt to get a check. Check the front frame. You just have to remove some pieces here, get that checked out, make sure that it's okay. And then you're good in terms of major maintenance items on this car. And of course, do your maintenance on it. If something happens to the engine, you know, the clutch is also something that you have to replace the engine or take the engine out. Those are big ticket items. You're looking at up to $10,000 potentially, depending on your market and depending on your mechanic. Those are the things that you also have to consider when you're buying a car like this. And that should be table stakes for a car like this anyway. The next question is, Canadian Rider, you have about 53,000 kilometers on the car. How reliable do you think this car will be going up to 100,000 kilometers? So that's a great question. There's lots of people on the forum with 150,000 kilometers on this car. Again, the point is the engine is a tried and true engine that was in the Audi RS4. The transmission, tried and true as well. So the major pieces, the mechanical pieces in this car are tried and true. So I can 100% see this to go 150,000 kilometers. Some other things that I did make sure I did was make sure I got a full paint protection film on the front end of the car to keep the exterior of the car looking as brand new as possible. And then I keep a religious maintenance schedule for this car. If you guys have seen those videos, Bill from Garage Auto Sports, he's the best shop in all of Ontario. I take my car to him. He does all the maintenance on this car. And he's the one who also installed the full custom exhaust and put the stage two tune on this car. If you haven't seen that video, that's such an epic video. Check it out in the link above. He did a spectacular job. And that's the one thing about this R8 that maybe was lacking when I bought it was the exhaust, but now the exhaust just sounds amazing with this Valvetronic custom system. So hopefully that answers your question. And the final question is around daily driver ability. Can I use this as my daily driver when I need to go get groceries, go do some chores around the house and that jazz? So the answer is yes, you absolutely can do that. The car has a great front space and it also has the ability to store like golf clubs in the back of the seat. So in terms of, you know, compared to my IS250, which is a normal midsize sedan, I get about 80% of the trunk space of something like that car. I've taken this car to go do grocery runs at Costco. I'm taking it to Walmart, home improvement projects. I put as much as you can imagine in this car and it does that really well. And that's why I think it's one of the best daily driver supercars money can buy. And I also made a video about that specifically, which I will also link up in the card above. So I hope I answered all of your questions. I've had this car for three years now. I feel like I know everything about it. And if you have any other questions, leave them down in the comment box down below. Love to help out, especially if you're in the journey of buying this car. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Over 29,000 subscribers. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.